the island of Masnua, not far from the capital of the United Arab Emirates, has a stable red fox population. Islands like this, made in their entirety by man and his machines, are numerous in the archipelago in front of Abu Dhabi. The building material for those islands is a byproduct of the intensive dredging of navigational routes through the shallow seas. Canal dredging has had a devastating effect on coral reefs in the whole area. They provide vital habitats for numerous species of marine animals inhabiting the Arabian Gulf. They also serve to mitigate the effect of the power of the waves, thus preventing the erosion of sandy beaches. These large coral heads of stony coral are the main building material of the reef. The coral polyps secrete a calcareous skeleton and have built massive reefs down the centuries. The process creates enormous natural sculptures which, when viewed from the air, look truly majestic in the shallow turquoise waters. Due to their ability to build such immense structures, the corals of tropical seas are the only living community apart from man visible from space. Despite high temperatures and the turbid and extremely saline water, corals have survived successfully in the waters of the Arabian Gulf. However, it has been noticed in the past few years that they are dying. Intensive oil exploitation and effluent discharge from agricultural land and human settlements have taken their toll. Whenever a ship anchors above a coral reef, its anchor breaks off a chunk of the calcareous skeleton of those animals. The most dramatic events, however, occurred in 1996 and 1998. It was then that most probably due to global warming, unusually high sea temperatures and increased solar radiation, almost all coral reefs, not only in the Gulf, but also in the whole of the Indian Ocean, perished. On the first of those catastrophic summers, those that perished were mostly the sensitive branching corals of the genus Ocropora. Two years later, every other type of coral began to die, even the most robust. Some of those reefs had taken hundreds of years to grow. Now, with their thin surface layer destroyed, they are exposed to erosion. Gradually, their place is being taken by sea algae. Corals grow extremely slowly, just about one centimetre a year. If people would decide to do something today, right now, to prevent global warming, we could expect the full recovery of coral reefs only after a few hundred years. From the information we have at the moment, we know that if you impact a coral reef beyond a certain amount, it does not seem to recover. And it, it does not seem to recover in terms of a human lifetime or two. But what we're asked is, what can we do about it? And that's a difficult thing, because, because the politicians would like us to tell them that there's a magic sort of wand which will fix it, but there isn't. So most of the follow-up work which we can do now is preparing, I think, for the harmful effects that this will cause. We all know about global warming and so on, and it's uh, quite a severe manifestation. And I'm extremely pleased you're asking me about this, because I've had some struggles with the media who are not terribly interested. If there's a pretty bird, a nice fish, or a panda, or a, something spectacular like that, then they want to know. But when an ecosystem dies, or at least has changed substantially, then it seems very difficult to interest a lot of the popular media. And I, I regret that, and I, I would like to explain more what has happened because we have got to prepare for it. It's a major disaster. A lot of the corals that died are three, four, five hundred years old. The record I have heard about is 700 years old or more. So if you say how long will it take to recover to the state it was two years ago, it's going to be that long anyway, isn't it? 
young corals have now begun to grow in the waters of Abu Dhabi. But it is up to us whether we shall allow them to develop once more into magnificent coral reefs, the mighty protectors of shorelines.